You have probably never heard of the Haradas, a Japanese American family that immigrated to Riverside, California in the early 1900s. But their ensuing landmark case surrounding the right for immigrants to own property in California became part of not only our state's history, but our nation's history as well. Let's meet with those who are now dedicating themselves to preserving these homes, heritage, and national landmark status. The story of the house is compelling. Jukichi and Ken Harada, who were Japanese immigrants, were sued by the state of California under the 1913 Alien Land Law. They were sued in 1916 in an attempt to force them out of a home that the family had recently purchased legally. The neighbors got together and offered to buy the home for more than what my grandparents had paid for it. And my grandfather said, I won't sell. You can murder me. You can throw me into the sea and I won't sell. He was taken to court and was actually criminally prosecuted in Riverside Superior Court. However, in 1918, Judge Hugh Craig uh, in Superior Court upheld the 14th Amendment it was a moment when the system worked as it should for an immigrant, and Harada House itself is the physical embodiment of an event that was ultimately triumphant for these Japanese immigrants. But this launched a long struggle uh, for Asian racial justice. It would take decades. History made its mark on my family. Nearly a quarter of a century later, Japanese and Japanese Americans were forcibly removed from the West Coast, and that included my family. My grandparents and um, my parents and their siblings were moved out of California. In the spring of 1942, the Harada's teenage son, Harold, scrawled a simple, poignant message on the wall upstairs that is still readable today, recording his family's removal to the internment camps. He wrote, evacuated on May 23rd, 1942, Saturday, 7 a.m. Harold Harada's parents died in the internment camps and Harold Harada went on to serve in Europe as a part of the 442nd Infantry Regiment of American soldiers of Japanese ancestry. My Auntie Sumi continued to live in the house until she was about 90 years old. Auntie Sumi kept all kinds of things. There's all kinds of letters which actually document what happened to people during incarceration. There are many, many letters between Auntie Sumi and Jess Stebler, the man who took care of the house during the war. After my Auntie Sumi passed away, we came across these trunks and we opened them up and inside was this obvious Japanese sash that was, I don't know, at least five feet long or so and it was totally embroidered and it looked like it was some sort of poetry. Uh, when Brenda and I showed it to a person knowledgeable in Japanese art, she just kind of stepped back and she took this breath and she goes, oh my goodness, your family came from more wealthy means. We had heard these stories about my grandmother being from a samurai family. We just kind of thought that was not true and you know, this sort of family fable, but it turns out that, that it was true. For us, it's time that Harada House be open to the public. The Museum of Riverside seeks to complete a $5.2 million campaign for its rehabilitation so that we may open the house to the public as a site for dialogue on timely issues of racial justice, civil rights, the notion of home, diversity, immigration, and some more topics. The judicial decision in 1918 was the first step to repeal uh, racially restrictive state laws that were aimed at Asian Americans. It was a moment when the system worked as it should for an immigrant, and Harada House itself is the physical embodiment of an event that was ultimately triumphant for these Japanese immigrants.